What is up, guys? Zach in here. Welcome to Deal or No Deal for Wholesaling Real Estate. What's up, guys? Zach in here. And in today's video, I want to have a talk about if your real estate wholesaling deal is a deal or no deal. Also, what I want to do today, too, is kind of do a live deal or no deal version version with you guys where you might submit a deal. You might show me a deal. You might want me to comp a deal. And I'm going to let you know if it is a deal or no deal for wholesaling real estate. This is really exciting, guys. This is going to be a fun one where we're going to break everything down exactly if it is a deal or no deal for wholesaling real estate. So let's kind of break everything down. So what is a deal or no deal? So the first question you have to ask yourself is, what makes a real estate wholesaling deal, right? And the first thing you understand what makes a real estate wholesaling deal is you got to understand the wholesaling real estate process. Basically how the wholesaling real estate process is, we get a property under contract and then we go find a cash buyer on that deal. So we do our marketing, we get a deal under contract, right? Then we actually go out here and try to find a cash buyer for the contract. Now, the thing is a lot of people sometimes come to me and say, Zach, I just can't sell this deal. And I look at the deal, I'm like, this is a no deal, right? Your comps are terrible. You have it under contract for it is way too high, right? And that just doesn't make a good deal. Anyone can get anybody can get a property under contract if they buy it for the right price or for the highest price possible. But it's never going to actually give real profits in real estate wholesaling operations. That, that's always the thing I think so many wholesalers starting out uh, really don't know. You know, they they, they all think uh, they get a property under contract, you can instantly sell it. And the truth is, for it to be a deal or no deal, the one variable for your success is how well of a contract you have. Because if you have a really good contract and really good price, uh, you can use it as leverage for your cash buyers for success. Uh, so remember guys, really when I break down the entire wholesaling real estate process, when someone comes to me and says, Zach, I can't find a cash buyer. I can't sell my real estate wholesaling deal. What do I do? Like, well, how, how do I deal with this? Right. And my number one answer to you is always this. If you can't sell a real estate wholesaling deal, it is basically because of one or two factors, right? Number one, if you can't sell a real estate wholesaling deal, it is because you didn't talk to enough cash buyers or the or the deal is just locked up for way too high. Those are the only two things. And when I talk to somebody about how they can't sell a deal or if it's not a deal or if it's a deal or no deal in wholesaling real estate, it all boils down to that, those basically those two concepts. There's one extra concept, uh, but it's a very, very rare one. And from me, who's actually doing a lot of JVs, uh, it, it's kind of crazy when you sort of look at the entire wholesaling real estate process. But Honestly, let's kind of break down the three, the main two. So the main two, if you get a property under contract, you can't sell that deal. It's because you have it locked up for way too high. And the only way to get around that is if you actually have to get a price reduction from the seller. Not the best thing in the world to do. Now, number two here is you just don't, you didn't talk to enough cash buyers, which is very alleviated. Uh, you can cold call the four rents on like Zillow. You can actually go out here and you could potentially JV the deal. I uh, do my ad copy on Facebook. Uh, that's honestly going to be the best way to find out if you have a real estate wholesaling deal or not. And so uh, overall, that was going to be two ways. Now, the extra bonus way, I, I think I can explain this the right way, is if you have such a small population, you can't sell this real estate deal. I, that's the one thing I could tell you guys right now. If you have such a small population, uh, you won't be able to sell. Like some people send me real estate wholesaling deals out here. And the problem is like the population of the county is like, I don't know, like 1,000, 2,000 for the whole county. And I'm like, I, I can't sell. Like, I guy sent me a deal in Texas, a uh, really small town. Like, I just couldn't sell. Like, when I'm building cash buyers in the dispo for the JV side of, of the operations I got going on, it's like, we need at least 50,000 at minimum for the county to have some cash buyer activity because, you know, we, we love going after the hedge funds. We like going after the big boy buyers. And a lot of them really like to stick to the metropolitan areas because, you get better ROIs for the rent and you also could sell it better. And it's a little more liquid. Now, wholesaling real estate, I mean, real estate investing in rentals is not the most liquid thing in the world. I get it. But if you understand like straight up, the one thing is if the population is not there, there's not going to be a lot of supply and demand. Uh, it all comes down to supply and demand, my friends. If you have a property under contract for, you think, a decent price, but there's just not enough demand for buy real estate there. You're not gonna you're not gonna sell the deal. Most people think, oh my gosh, I one guy told me, Zach, I'm in. Uh, he said I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico. There was just not enough demand here for real estate. I'm like, are you? Kidding? It's a huge city, huge city. There's plenty of demand there. 
Someone, someone said that about uh, Chicago once. Someone said that about Miami. Uh, it's hilarious. Uh, the ARV doesn't matter because you have hedge funds. You, there's always cash buyers who actually have funds for the deal. So you just got to understand that. So when you have to determine to yourself if you have a property or you have it under contract or you're actually going to go on the appointment if it's going to be a deal or no deal, I'm the little Howie Mandel today. Should have gone like a little soul patch right here. That, that, that would have been very fitting, wouldn't it? Um, but if you want to see if it's a deal or no deal, the easiest way to do it is just using my simple MAO calculator. Uh, so what is MAO? MAO stands for Max Allowable Offer. Uh, so MAO is basically the most you can offer on a contract on a deal. So if I'm going to go meet with a seller, right? Let's say I'm seeing the people in the chat. So let's say I'm going to go to Fernando's house. I'm going to go buy his house, right? And look at the ARV minus repairs and I put a multiply on there. I can figure out the most the cash buyer is willing to buy this deal for is $100,000, which means I have anything below that price. It's pure profit for me. That's pretty good, guys, right? Like that is pure profit in my bank account for wholesaling real estate. So the one thing I'm looking over here is so if I go meet with him and he says he wants to sell for 95, I say I want to buy it for 75 and we meet the middle at 80, for example. I know since a cash buyer for my calculations is gonna could buy this for at most a hundred thousand dollars. I can sell it to him for a hundred grand. I have on a contract for 80, I'm gonna make twenty thousand dollars in profit here. That's pretty good. That ain't bad at all, right, guys? Uh, so just understand that starting out, like if it's a deal or no deal, it's obviously a deal if I can make profit on the deal. So when you really look at everything, it is always going to be a deal in wholesaling real estate if you can sell it to a cash buyer for over what your contract price is. Even if it's 500 bucks, even if it's a thousand, it's technically a deal. Uh, so just have that understanding in the wholesaling real estate process and uh, you're going to do a lot better. Uh, so let's kind of break down the multiplier. So depending on your ARV, right? Of course, this is all at freewholesaling.com. So everyone should, you know, go to freewholesaling.com and know exactly where to actually learn wholesaling real estate the right way. Uh, but honestly, starting out here, ARV minus repairs multiplied by a multiplier. So if your ARV is under $120,000, then you probably want to multiply it by around 70%. So ARV minus repairs multiplied by 70%. That's going to be the best uh, possible scenario. I would probably use around 80%. Um, if my ARV is like 120, it's like 250,000. I'd probably use 80% there. And then 83%. Uh, more or less, I would probably do 250k to 300k ARV, and then anything over 300,000, I would probably do 85%. Uh, so just look at the multiply there. ARV minus repairs multiplied by any of those. Uh, that's honestly the max allowable offer you're going to get on your deals. Uh, so just have that understanding. Uh, that that's probably going to be the best thing. So just understand, guys. It's not a deal if it is above the MAO. If it's below, you're going to be fine. So that's kind of how I determine if something is a deal or no deal. So you understand it. Uh, what I'm going to do is answer some questions. If you guys want, you can actually submit some of your deals um, and we can break it down. Let me give a link so anyone can hop on here and submit their deal. And we can kind of do a deal or no deal scenario on there. Uh, let me answer some questions here and sort of see what's going on. You know, so uh, Fernando says, what's up? What's up, Fernando? Evening team. What's up, Teresa? How is it going? What is up, Olivia? David. So what's the deal with the Zach? I just saw your uh, TikToks. David, what is up? Uh, yeah, so I uh, am on TikTok. I, I am a TikToker. I don't know if that's embarrassing not to say, but yes. Uh, so I am primarily a real estate wholesaler. I also do real estate investing. So if you're watching me from TikTok, you probably saw my crazy videos, right? The, the reason for those videos is I'm just showing you how to get started in real estate wholesaling. And real estate wholesaling is basically the process of finding somebody who wants to sell their ugly house we agree to buy that house and we sell it to a rich landlord or a house flipper for a profit. This can be ten, twenty, fifteen thousand dollars of a finder's fee. You can make a ton of money doing this process. It's a side hustle. It's also a legit business. Um, so, David, FYI, I have a book right here: um, How Real Estate Fortunes Are Made. Uh, from uh, George Bockel from nineteen seventy two. He was wholesaling real estate. He was doing creative financing. He was doing subject twos, assignment of contracts, flipping. This process has been done since the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2010s, 2000s, 1960s, 50s, 40s, 30s. For the past, for hundreds of years, this process has been going on. It's basically agreeing to buy a house and flipping it for a finder's fee. Uh, that is basically, it's a huge industry. Overall, people that do this make billions and billions of dollars in assignment fees. Uh, that's what 
most people who do their statistics for wholesaling have kind of said, I'm using their stats. I could be wrong in that, but at least, at least 500 million. I could say that without, it's, it's, I know it's over a billion. I think it's in the billions, uh, but it's a billion dollar industry. It's huge. Um, everyone in their guru, every guru and their mom tries to sell you on course on, on this. Um, but really like in wholesaling real estate, it, it is one of the best side hustles ever to get started. Uh, so this is my channel. I have a personal channel. I have multiple channels, uh, but this is my personal Zach in personal brand video. I don't know, channel. I just do my own little wholesaling videos too, because I can't post more than once a day on the flip with Rick. Uh, so the Zach in, I can kind of do more content uh, stuff. I like, um, I do the stuff I love on flip with Rick, but just me and Rick together on there. He's got his channel. We have a wholesaling house real channel. So make sure you subscribe to all those. Uh, but what I can tell you is David, if you're starting out on TikTok, what I can tell you is You've probably heard me scream about it so many times. So just go on the bottom here. It's freewholesaling.com. That's a free course. It'll basically I'll show you the entire process. No, you can't put your credit card in. There's no way to actually pay me. It's a completely free real estate course. There's no gimmicks. There's no funnel to go sell you on a mentorship program. I don't do any of that, David. So just FYI, I'm giving you the full disclosure. Just in case anyone watching this who doesn't know who I am, I'm not a guru. I will never ask for your money. If someone asks for your money, that's probably a scammer. Uh, so just FYI, I don't do any of that stuff. I don't sell anything. None of that stuff. Okay, so that is who I am. I just want to help you out. Uh, so that is the process here. Uh, so let's answer some questions here. So uh, Trevor, Trevor has a question here. He says, hey, Zach, first live stream after a few weeks of listening to your podcast. What's up, Trevor? How's it going? You're always welcome anytime to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. Always here to help. Uh, I was wondering uh, in Denver, Colorado or anywhere around, it would be a good starting market. Should I start virtually somewhere? I actually think Denver, Colorado is a decent market. Now, Trevor, you got to answer this question to me. Now I'm asking you the question. I'm interviewing you, quote unquote here. Uh, Trevor, are you in Denver or are you in like a city 45 minutes away? Because I, that's, I, I, that's the problem because I'm trying to give you the right answer. And unfortunately, some people like they live 45 minutes away and it's a completely different type of market. Denver works. You have to be below the median uh, home price in that area. So let, let's kind of sort of look that up together here. What is the median home price for Denver, Colorado? So Denver is 653, which is insane. So we're probably going to be under 400,000. So you can make that work. I would probably do the county. So let me just do some research here. Colorado County. So um what county let's see in the seat of arapoa county until when the county was divided uh so if you're around the area you just let me know um, it should be the el paso right el paso so colorado county median home price when you get outside of denver it gets in like 475. So I would probably stick to under 300,000. Um, like I think your sweet spot's going to be 150 to like 350 um, for wholesaling there. Uh, so, okay. So I'm in Westminster, which is 25 to 30 miles north of downtown. So let's look up Westminster for you. Westminster, Colorado County. Okay. Adam and Jefferson counties. Median home price. So if you're in Westminster, it's a little more expensive. So do some research around it. I would stick to houses under 400,000. And I think it's going to, I think it'll actually work really, really well. Um, I, I don't think that'd even be a problem at all. So um, yeah, I, I would definitely wholesale locally right now and figure out reverse drive for dollars, drive for dollars. I think you know the drill. If you, you, you scream about it so many times, uh, that's honestly what I would probably be kind of nearing there. Uh, Franklin, what is up? Franklin says, hey, Zach, what if I can't find the legal description of a property? Can I leave it blank on the contract and erase that part? Please help me. I'm new. Franklin, don't worry. Don't freak out. Franklin, let me ask you a question. Franklin, what is your county that you're wholesaling in? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to answer this with, I'm asking you that question. The reason I'm asking you that question is it's most likely 99% chance it's going to be under public records or the property appraiser. 
So if I'm buying a house from a John Wesley Smith Meyer, okay, I don't know, Westminster, John Wesley Smith Meister, um, I'm going to search John Wesley Smith Meister on the property appraiser website, and then his deed's going to pop up his property, and then you can get the legal address there. Now, if I can't find the property appraiser for some reason, which is almost impossible not to, I'll actually go to public records, search Westminster dash John or Jonathan or whatever his full name is. Look at his deed, which should be, which actually is on public record. And then the legal description will be on the deed and then I can write it on there. Uh, it's not going to be very much a valid contract without the legal description. So if you go to the property appraiser, it'll actually pop it up. Uh, let me give you a quick example. Let me go to the St. Lucie County property appraiser. Uh, which I'm just going to pop out a random address on here. Give me a second. So let me share my screen. So this is the St. Lucie County property appraiser. Nothing crazy here, right? This is just the property appraiser. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search a random house. So like this is just on the first like portion. I like these aren't anything I own. Feek properties here. Uh, these are TBD site addresses. So I'm just going to go to a hundred and I'm just going to keep going until I see an address. Actually, I'm just going to put a random number. I'm going to put two, three for co for, uh, Michael Jordan. So two, three, nine, Oh, Johnston road, which I've actually done some deals on Johnston road. Um, let me share my screen here and let's pop up the property card. So here it is. So here's the property card. Guys, I don't own this house. I have no association. Wait, did I flip this house? Hold on. Hold on. Actually, no. Okay, this person's owned it since 1994. So I did not flip this house. I might flip this house though. All right. So when I look at this property appraiser here, uh, what's going to pop up is these little features on here. So uh, basically, I'm just going to go to basic information here. And you can see uh, the property site is 239 Johnston Road. Uh, I see that a Dave and Angela own the house. Nice. Right here is that big fat thing that says legal description. I'm going to copy this and just paste that and then print it on there. Uh, that's honestly how I'm going to figure out exactly what the legal description of the property is going to be. Uh, if I want to know more about the property, uh, the building information is going to be on here, the building type, the year it was built. Guys, you don't need to pay for a software to learn like exactly how to wholesale, right? Like you don't need to pay for a software to learn all this. In like, this is all from the government, right? Uh, 1987 it was built as a metal roof. It is a wood sheath house, a wood frame. Uh, it's got a D plus grade, which from 87, you're, you're really not going to have a good uh, telltale sign on it. I can see here it was, it is a two, a two bedroom, one bath. Uh, where's the square footage? Okay. It says right here, 1,152 square feet. The gross sketch area is 1,232 square feet. So sometimes just understanding your seller actually might tell you the property is 1,232 square feet and you might do your comps on there. And some people get that wrong. And that's why sometimes they get it under contract for way too high because they did their the comps the wrong way. When the truth is the actual finished under air is 1,152. Uh, 1, so just do the actual square footage. You can see here on the sketch. Um, can I zoom this in? Come on. Where's the zoom? So you can see the actual under air square footage right here. There's like a patio area right here is the under it's uh, basically that. So perfect. Uh, and then you can kind of look at the base area. So the base area is that 1152 while there is an open porch, which isn't the under air square footage. I want to confuse you guys on this. Um, I can click here to features and yard items, right? The only basically feature on this property, there's a chain link fence. Guys, this is free. I just popped this up online. This is not kind of like, this is all free information from the government, right? Most wholesalers don't know about this. It's crazy. You have the tax assessed value. It's really not going to tell you anything crazy. Um, sales. So this person's owned it since 1994 uh, for $45,000. So go here to permits. This is a very important one too. This gives you secret information about the property. So when I'm comping, checking out if, it, if it's a deal or no deal, very, very powerful stuff, right guys? I can click here and actually see the issue date on it. It says this thing um, constructed addition. So additions to existing construction. I don't exactly what that is from 1994, but I'm probably gonna do more research on that and sort of figure it out. Uh, what I can see here from issue date, there was a permit because I'm under the 
permits tab right here. It was actually issued April 17th, 2014, a roof permit, which most likely, as we can see here on building, I go back here to buildings. It says here that the roof, uh, where's roof type? Roof cover metal. So that means it's most likely another metal roof. Uh, it probably would have changed when the permit changed. Uh, so no fear or anything there, whatever. But uh, basically, this means that there's probably a new metal roof put on around uh, eight years ago, which gives us some good insight information about the property. So I'm talking to sellers, people like, Zach, how do you know there's all the information? Are you doing this on props or anything? No, I'm not. Um, I'm really just looking at this, and it works really, really well. Uh, you do the tax uh, assessor, sorry, tax estimate tool. Uh, sometimes you just pop the stuff in and print it for yourself. I know some people like printing. They got the wind design speed. You don't really need any of that stuff. Um, it's kind of a synopsis of all the information, right? They have historical values. Usually in Martin County, um, pretty much in Martin County though, uh, and St. Lucie counties and all these other counties, um, it's just these the historical values are way too low, which is good for the taxpayer, but uh, not too crazy. So and then you got like a quick summary on there. I'll kind of break that down. Um, pretty simple. But uh, property appraiser websites is where, um, Franklin, you're going to get that information. Uh, let me know if it's not helping you or you need help with it. I would obviously love to come up here and help you out with that. Hey, Zach, it's Shree. What's up, Shree? The kid from Albert. Bro, I remember. You were 16, got your first check. I remember it all. I'll get, uh, I'm about to get a contract on three properties soon, but I saw a property where they were selling a mortgage note. Should I consider it? Um. It depends on the terms of the mortgage note. If you want to hop on or talk to me about it, I'd uh, love to get some more information about it and, and uh, sort of see. Uh, Soldier Los, what is up? Any way we can get a list of the ARV calculations. Uh, so that is at freeholsling.com. So at the bottom here, freeholsling.com. What is up, Victor? What is up? What is up? Um, Arkansas is a good state, I would say. The water company said they didn't have a list for water shut off in the code enforcement. Uh, people shouldn't get back with me. What else to do? Hey, uh, I would go to in person and see. Of course, Trevor, of course, here to help, here to help. Brandon, what's up, Brandon? This is a good question. You know, what do you feel about Wichita, Kansas? I actually think Wichita, Kansas is not a bad market. Um, what do I mean by Wichita? So, Wichita, Kansas is a non disclosure state. So, the only issue with Kansas, I could tell you, uh, is those. Uh, the sold prices, the comps are going to be a little harder to tell if it's a deal or no deal on. Uh, but honestly, like when you're looking at everything on this, um, if you have like a zackdata.com or like a listrei.com, you're going to be fine. I feel like a lot of wholesalers really, really get confused on this. Um, a non disclosure state just don't know what the comps are to a point. So if you use a paid service, kind of get MLS access with uh, listrei.com, zackdata, you're going to be fine. That's prop, prop shipment batch leads. Uh, you're going to be fine. I, I think a lot of wholesalers really uh, confuse that process. Uh, it's not as complicated as you think, guys. It, it's really not. Fernando, what is up, Fernando? Fernando said, I had a deal fall through because the repairs were more than what I thought. Uh, it apparently had water damage and that turned my buyers off. Yeah. So, Fernando, you got a couple options on this. You know, you can go back to the seller and actually try to get. Uh, the property, you probably get a reduction on the price or, or just get another buyer. It depends on the water damage. Since you're in Pensacola, uh, it's probably going to be killer. If, is it something that you couldn't uh, find or was it something you couldn't deal with? So you got to let me know a little more about that uh, because there, there's a couple ways you can't sell that deal. Um, if it is water damage, uh, I could tell you that it really depends on the extent because if it gets in the drywall, it's going to be hard. I'm not the expert when it comes to comping properties and you know figuring all that stuff out. Uh, but I don't think you can really go wrong uh, if you get the right price for it. Uh, so yeah, water damage on the roof is going to be bad. You might have to comp off just a new roof. Uh, buying that, it's like on the exterior walls. You're, you're gonna, it's less. Uh, it's less of a repair, of a repair. And as someone that has wholesaled uh, a bunch, uh, I've gone through all these type of repairs. It's going to be fine. All right. Let's go here. Also, guys, if you got hop on, ask a question, send a deal. Uh, I'll give you the link. Link here is StreamYard. Uh, so we're living a public today. So we're living the public life today on here. Uh, so StreamYard.com forward slash 63C3YRN6DK. Uh, so 
Uh, that is how you do that one. So let's go to the next question here. Uh, so Tony, what is up, Tony? Tony says, can you please explain the lockbox process for virtual wholesaling? More yeah, Tony, you are way overthinking this. Uh, let's kind of break it out like really simple because I, let's make it really simple. Okay, let me show you this. But first of all, I, I get this asked and quite, I'm not telling you don't know this, Tony, but like some people, it's actually kind of confusing. So we'll, uh, let, let me just show you. So what is a lockbox really quick for beginners out here? Brand new in wholesaling. Like, what is the lockbox, right? A lockbox is basically a lock you put on a house and you get a code. You can actually walk in the house, walk out of the house. Pretty much you get a Home Depot, 20, 30 bucks. So that is what a lockbox is. Now, for wholesaling real estate, why do I care about a lockbox? Why do I want a lockbox? What's the situation with it? Like, what, what, what is the point? Now, the point of a lockbox in virtual wholesaling is if the property is vacant, you can have showings with cash buyers where they can actually go by and look at the house and the seller doesn't deal with it. You can bring like five or six cash buyers through. It's really, really cool. Um, that's pretty much it. You got to pay someone to probably buy that lockbox if it's virtual and just put it on the uh, door of the house, get a key from the seller. That's it because you won't have the key. And how are you actually going to do a walkthrough virtually with the seller, right? Either you can have the cash buyer meet with the seller and then you have a really trusted cash buyer. You can have a runner actually kind of be a showing agent for you. You can have a stinking realtor do it for you, right? Like there's a lot of ways around it. Um, but honestly, like you just, if you can find someone to put a lockbox on a house and walk a bunch of cash buyers through, it's going to be really good for wholesaling. Um, I, I really think uh, most wholesalers really overcomplicate that process. Um, if you just go out here in virtual wholesaling and just put a vacant house under contract, get a lockbox on there, walk three or four cash buyers through, you don't have to deal with the stress, really easy to bring cash buyers through. Um, just make sure though, I will give you this uh, tip. Uh, if you have a cash buyer and they're going to walk through the house, make sure you at least get their driver's license if they're not trusted. Uh, just so if they do something crazy, not, something nuts, uh, you're going to know how, how to do it the right way. So th that's definitely uh, going to be my question. Let me know if that answered your question. Uh, love to see it. So uh, let's see here. All right. Oh, all right. Oh, Rick. Yo. Hey, Zach. What's up? I was just wondering, I'm trying to get batch leads. Um, using your code, what's the discount I get there? I think it's 50% off. Is it just the first month, right? Yeah, I would probably use uh, Zach Data if you get the free uh, list pulling, though. That's probably better. Zach one. Data? Get cost, okay, yeah, cost I'm about to get money. started there, and I, I really wanted to just I was ask you. I was yeah. wondering about that. All right, and then try it out. Try it. Listari.com. It's free. Just... That's my okay. point. that's something I tell you. Awesome, awesome, brother. Thank you so much. All right. Any other questions? Uh, no, I'm just keeping up with the program. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, bro. Thank you, Zach. Thanks. I told you there was gonna be a Rick hopping on today. Actually, I don't think I told anyone that, but there was a there's always a Rick on here. So uh had a Rick hop on today, so that's always kind of funny. But uh keeping the Rick on the uh on the channel here. So uh yeah. What is up? Oh my gosh. All right. So hold up. What happened in the intro? So that intro guys is for when I do my regular live streams. This is like a weekend live stream. This is kind of more casual. This is on the Zach and channel only when I do a live stream and it's on the Rick flip with Rick channels. It's on all the other channels. We're going to do the intro. That intro is for flip with Rick, basically uh flip with Rick only. Uh, when I'm, when the flip with Rick's going live too on there. Uh, but so it's only Zach in, it's just gonna be, that intro is not gonna be on there, but, um, Got to pump you guys up. Uh, the Dan Morin Show. What is up? Uh, that, thank you, Zach. Thank you for the free lesson, Zach. Only, uh, only no sweat equity and holding. So that works. What I can tell you is sweat equity only get you so far. Um, you can use sweat equity to get your first two or three deals, but like if you do it all yourself, you're going to go crazy. You use some of that money you make in wholesaling with a sweat equity. There's something a little easier maybe hiring someone for cold calling, maybe doing some SMS text blasting, having somebody doing it for you. Uh, makes it a little easier just doing that where you're not like constantly grinding, 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 grinding. Uh, it's It gets a lot easier when you do that. I, that that's all I can really say uh, nicely to a point. It just makes it a lot easier for you guys. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I appreciate giving everything off for free. I, I do it from the bottom of my heart. I want to help this industry. 
I want to help everyone learn wholesaling for free. And uh, that is the point here. So yeah, um, it's a good free. Uh, I love the free little lessons here, but uh, awesome. Have a great one, man. So Zach, we got another Zach in the house. Zach says, why don't you talk about how hard it is to wholesale in this current market? All right, Zach, let me be completely honest with you. <laughs> this market's on hard to wholesale in. It's pretty regular still. A hard market to wholesale in is when all the cash buyers dry up and they're not buying anymore. There's plenty of cash buyers still buying. Pretty much every wholesaler I know that's doing very well, the activity is not stopping. The activity from hedge funds might shift a little, but bro, if, if you're complaining about how currently tough things are, you don't even know what tough is, bro. I'm I'm saying this in the nicest way. <laughs> when there's like an actual like crazy recession going on and people are being laid off of jobs, that's when wholesaling gets tougher. And you can make you guys can make more money during those times because you get properties under contract for more, and there's cash buyers there. Uh, the complaining about how tough this market is, bro. If you're complaining right now about this current market, you're, you're not going after the right lists. Uh, most likely, if you're complaining, you're going after the same list that everyone in the guru is telling you. You are not reverse trying for dollars. And most importantly, you're probably not going after probates. Um, I, I don't, dude, I, I, I did more deals last month than I did in my entire, like basically, that I did more deals that month than any other deals I've ever done in one month the rest of my life. So I, I can't go and talk about how tough and terrible this market is when I got people like Jovi, I got all these people posting how many deals they're doing. Go on the Facebook group and just look it up. People are making a ton of deals because they don't make excuses. The thing you got to understand, Zach, Zach Eagle, the more you make excuses, the more it poisons the brain. When it poisons your brain and your mind, it, it, it's a very interesting quote. I'm not getting a whole biblical quote. It's a cool biblical quote though. But like, as a man thinketh, a man does. And as a, like for women too, like as a, you are what you think. And if you think wholesaling is terrible, you think the market sucks. You think how difficult everything is and life's hard. Life is going to be hard. Have you ever talked to somebody who's completely broken? And I'm saying this in the nicest way possible. Life's hard. Things are terrible. I, I just, uh, so, so, every, the world's such in a bad and terrible place. And they're sort of sulking to a point. And then have you ever talked to somebody who's like really excited and lively and excited? Like, oh my God, this is a great day. I, the sun's bright. The birds are tripping. This is great. It's a choice when you wake up in the morning. Okay. I would tell anyone Armageddon's coming down for wholesaling. Okay. I'll be in there in the fight with you. I'm not, I'm saying this the sweetest way. If wholesaling goes down, like if the market goes, market is down 50, 60%, I'll be making more money than I ever had in my entire life. I'll make, I'll be making even more money than now. So I'm not rooting on that because of course it's bad for the people, but you got to learn like when markets shift, you make the same amount of money, but more. If you're, if you're complaining now about how hard wholesaling is, just imagine how hard it is, uh, how easy it would be if you didn't complain. I just, it, it drives me crazy people. Zach, if you want to hop on one-on-one, -on -one, I'll talk to you. <laughs> it makes me funny. I just, guys, either you make excuses or you take, make, you get, take action or make excuses. You get results or make excuses. It's which one do you choose? Um, it drives me crazy sometimes people do that, but um, yeah. Hello. Yo. Uchina? Hello. What's up? Yo, what's up? Dude, I've been watching you for some time now. Uh, and you've definitely uh, you know, helped me and my partner out. Um, we've started closing deals now. Um, you know, so yeah, like I said, I appreciate you on that aspect. But really my main question, um, I just had one quick question, uh, because we were basically selling to uh a hedge fund and the hedge fund they're not buying anymore so we're tr we've, I, we've been trying to find another hedge fund and we've kind of struggled uh finding another hedge fund do you have any advice what market cleveland ohio okay so it have you only been selling to one hedge fund yeah okay um uchena is it uchina uchena U yeah uchena uchena yeah. Do me a favor and DM me. 
Okay. Do you have Facebook? Yeah. Are I'm you in your. I'm right in now? the. I direct you, message sorry. me in the next thirty seconds. I'm going to send you somebody that has a lot of hedge funds in Cleveland. He can connect. Okay. He's going to want JV with you though. Maybe he's going to be nice. I don't know, but he's one guy I know who does a lot of hedge funds in Cleveland. Um, uh, I don't know if he has a course or not, but I know he has a lot of hedge funds in Cleveland. He's just a connection. If he tries to sell you a five thousand dollar course, don't buy it. But he could help you connect you in the right way. Sound good? Hopefully he's DMing me right now. But uh, yeah, guys, the one well, I'm waiting for him. The one thing you do ask, like even when you talk to me, like even on the off chance, like I think he kind of threw a hell mary. Like, do you know any, like hedge funds in Cleveland? I actually know a guy that has a lot of. Cle- I know I know people that have a ton of cash buyers in Cleveland. I can always get you guys connected. All these guys always ask me to hop up on their podcast, do this, do this for me, and I'm I get connected. I don't have to go to masterminds because they all want to be on my podcast here. So, all right. Yo. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Yeah, I messaged. Are you messaged me? All right. I'll, yeah. I'll go hit, hit you up while I'm doing this. All right. So the other thing you can do also is, are these like multifamily deals or single family? Uh, well, <clears throat> for the most part, they're single families. Um, okay. Yeah, for the it. most part. So I'd I'd be looking at cash buyers also outside of hedge funds Um, because hedge funds do buy for pretty much the best prices, but you still want to have tons of cash buyers. Um, How many hours are you spending a day on, uh, sorry, how many hours are you and your partner spending a week on pulling cash buyers? Um, not, not, not any really at all. How many are you spending so, marketing? Um, like I said, our hedge fund literally, like they were buying all of our deals and like they were buying it for like $15,000 plus what we were asking. So we weren't really, <laughs> you know. How many hours are you spending on your marketing? None. You were like, not market. How are you finding your deals? Oh, you're, oh, you're saying as far as like- marketing. Uh, sellers uh, getting, oh um well basically we were um so i've got we've got so i've got a guy that buys properties for us um from an auction and okay. he basically like he'll if buy you have like, a good system don't tell me about it i, I don't want to know i don't want oh, yeah. to steal your stuff i don't, don't want to steal your thunder bro oh, i'm yeah. just I, i'm thinking about traditional wholesaling yeah usually the rule of thumb is if you're spending 10 hours cold calling uh-huh. You should spend that minimum, minimum a quarter of that time building cash buyers list. So if you're spending for every 10 hours cold calling, you right. need to spend at least two hours finding cash buyers. Cleveland's really easy, man. Like really easy, like, uh-huh. really easy. I get people calling me in like no name city, Ohio. And I'm like, bro, this sucks. You're in Cleveland. <laughs> I could pull right. 50 cash buyers in Cleveland in the next 30 minutes for you. Cleveland's easy. What, what I want you to do is I want you to start trying like, Try two hours a week, right? Mm-hmm. Like just two hours a week, really simple. Go to all the Cleveland Facebook groups. Do what I tell you. So there's ad copy for you to post. And there's mm-hmm. also, you just search like at gmail.com cash buyer and just go through all the feeds on the Cleveland groups and start DMing people about cat being cash buyers. Right. It's going to, I promise you, they're going to hop up. They're all going to pop up. It's very easy, man. Uh, Cleveland's an easy one. All right, yeah. You're the cash buyer employee. That's the problem. Like you're dependent on one cash buyer and then they just give you the middle finger and then you're like, oh no, right? You yeah. Backup plan. Uh, yeah. It happens all... I've had cash buyers like that before. Um, uh, usually like like heart doctors and like like surgeons, like they pay stupid prices and like they only have like a million dollars and they buy a million dollars of houses and I'm like, uh oh, what do I do, right? right. You've seen that backup plan. No big deal. You're fine. Like, it keep, if you get the supply of deals coming in, the cash buyers are simple. I bet. Thank you. So how many hours a week? Ten, at least 10. No, at least two. At least. Oh, I thought you said at least. <laughs> oh, you can do 10, man. That, that, that ain't going to hurt. Like if you have inventory, you can't sell mm-hmm. do two a day. Right. But, um, hit up that guy I messaged you about. Oh. See if he's got any connections. You got my message, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't be screaming that guy's name out everywhere, but for you, 
I'm going to help you out. So um, go hit him up. Um, I don't know if he wants, I, I, I know he he's, he just talks my head off about hedge funds in Cleveland. So hit him up. Um, but yeah, I, I think you'll be fine, man. Let me know if you need any help with other ones, but uh, local, local cash buyers still buy at good, good rates, man. All uh, right. Yeah. I mean, I'll check into that. Definitely. All right, man. I All right. Man, thank you. you. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you too. All right. Bye. Have a great one. You too. Oh, all right. Next, we got Shri. Hey, man. How are you, hey. man? Long time no see. Yeah, it has been a very long time. Um, I have been following like your posts and stuff like that. I've been watching your stuff, but you know, it's been a very long time since you've actually talked like face to face. So. How many deals have you done? I've only done one so far. I've that been one. All right. Time. I'm going yeah, to post that, that check. All right. Are your parents yeah. a little more on board now? Yeah, they're like, yeah, damn, like you made a check, like. Yeah, I mean, I think okay. Yeah. That was your number one concern. I remember that you're like, my parents are not the board. I'm like, just get the check. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, just get the check. Man, yeah. So much yeah. easier. <laughs> but awesome. Yeah, are, you, so, are, you, are you 17 now? Or are you still 16? I'm still 16. I'm turning 17 in three months. Oh, love it, man. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what I'm trying to do is I'm I've got I've got deals outside of Albuquerque. They're still in New Mexico, but. I've got one deal in Las Lunas, New Mexico, and then I've got two deals in Alamogordo, New Mexico. So, okay. Um, and they're about like seventy percent ARV, I'm guessing. Like, I think they're all over the place, but um, yeah, they're about like I think the Las Lunas one is like sixty percent, and that's the lowest one. So, um, but I don't know how to move forward with it because uh, the one one of the properties in Alamogordo, the guy is asking for proof of funds, but I have like ten grand in my name, so I don't know what to do. Alamora. Alamogordo. Do you want me to spell it out? Yeah. Yeah. A L A M O G O R D O. Okay. I see it. I mean, your biggest problem here is New Mexico is basically just Santa Fe and Albuquerque, like metro wise. Mm -hmm. So it, it's going to be harder to sell those deals just because the population is a little. So you're in Otero County. Mm -hmm. um, population is 63,000. Like, not bad. You could probably sell it. Um, not too bad, man. So your issue yeah. is the proof of funds here? Yeah, proof of funds, yeah. Okay. So as a 16-year-old, you, you, you got a couple choices. Now, you could probably use your cash buyer's proof of funds. That's going to be your best bet. I'm just being completely honest. They're going to be your partner on the transaction. Um, mm -hmm. Why do they ask you for it? Were you, were you confident on the phone? Like what's situation he's talking yeah about i was, was kind of like I, I may have been a little overconfident on the phone i may have been like well i mean i was like you know like tell him that like yeah i got i'm gonna buy your house in cash you know i'm gonna close in like a month time you know i was like i was talking all this like crazy stuff and like they were like yeah show me proof of funds and i was like oh well there i'm stuck so i'm in india right now so there's like a lot india. Of yeah i'm in india yeah beautiful so I'm in morning time awesome man <laughs> That's cool. Um, well, you're virtual, so that's not bad. Um, you're probably going to use the cash buyer's proof of funds. So, uh, that's all I could tell you because they're tight yeah. part of the transaction. As, as a 16-year-old, that's the only way I could think about it. Yeah. But the only issue like that I could think of with that is like the um, person, like my, the cash buyer stealing my deal, just like cutting me off completely. That's the thing. That's, that's the risk I'm taking there. Yeah. There's a risk, man. Um, the, the problem is that cash buyers, you're going to use, you're, they're going to be your partner, but you're not giving them your information. Now, mm -hmm. the seller might be like, oh, I want to call them. That's a situation you have to talk to the cash buyer on. Um, mm -hmm. So I would call the cash buyer and kind of see where they're, they're kind of at at that. They're okay with you doing that or not. And just see if they're up mm -hmm. front or not. They're technically your partner on the transaction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Help me get the deal for the lowest price possible. You're fine. You're fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, I just don't want any distractions right now. So fine, yeah. Man. Um, it's just, uh, and then another one, I saw that there's like a mortgage note that they're selling. It was kind of a weird post. I don't know what yeah. they were like. They were like, yeah, like the house is worth like 150 grand and we're selling the mortgage note for like 65 grand. And like, I don't know, something weird. Like it's like, and then they're like, yeah, we have, we owe $80,000 on it and we're selling the mortgage note for 65. Like, I don't know what to do on that. That, that was a weird one. So I was just Unless asking. you can take the deed over or control it and rent it out. Um, look at it and get back to me on the details on it and let me know. Okay. I, okay. I can see if there's a play or not on it and we can try to help you out on it. Okay. Got it. Okay. And then another thing is like, like, 
Um, I like the whole market crash thing. I feel like I could take advantage of that. Like, honestly, I think there's something there that I could like take advantage of. What do you think? Like, cause like, I feel like people are going to be more motivated in a crash. Tree, I'll give you 50 grand right now. You can tell me what the market's going to do in the next six months. I have no idea. Um, yeah. if real estate might go down 10, 20%, dude, it's not going to change really a thing. You're just going to get really. prices down lower. If it goes down 50%, then might be better. Um, I don't know, man. Like I, I look at the data and I bring it back to you. Nobody mm -hmm. knows right now what's going to happen. Yeah. It could technically go up. We don't know, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Fed's probably going to raise rates and we're going to see. It, it might slow things down, but I, I, nobody knows, man. I wish I knew. Yeah. I can yeah. really help. Uh, yeah. But the only thing I tell you is that you're still going to wholesale. It's still going to be yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, one more question. So I, uh, what was it? What was I going to ask? So I think like, um, like there's like a lot of violence, like in a lot of the areas that I'm like driving for dollars, like there's a lot of like gun violence going on. So do you think it's still worth it for me to like drive around for, I got my driver's license by the way. Yeah, so. yeah you're in Albuquerque. So, <laughs> yeah. um, Albuquerque is an interesting one, man. Um, uh, not going to lie. It ain't the safest place, but I, you probably live in a safe area in Albuquerque. Yeah, right? I live in a really safe area. Yeah, yeah. like so both there's, stuff like that. Yeah. you know, there, there's the Breaking Bad Albuquerque and there's the nice one. So, um, I would probably not be in a high crime area. And I think no. you can, what's the point? Like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. I never did that. I would not feel comfortable there. And mm -hmm. when you wholesale house, there's decent areas in Albuquerque where it's really where like blue collar workers are. And then there's like where there's bad stuff, right? Be in very safe areas. I would not be, I would not risk anything. Okay. Yeah. And like, also like, like being like 16, maybe like almost, almost 17 next year, like in this business, like, I feel like, like the respect level, like I, I don't have a very big, like buyers list, like cash buyers list right now. Do you think I should like just keep cold calling and just like try to build that even more? Like, cause in Albuquerque, there's not very many cash buyers that are like good. There's a lot of like, like, People that are gonna like cut me off deals and stuff here. So, and yeah, there's gonna be a lot. You're gonna have to keep doing it. Cold calling the four rents is probably gonna be the best bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. If you educate these landlords exactly. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna pay the most, but they're solid. Yeah. Um, and that'd be that'd basically be it. You know, at 16, man, it's the respect you actually get a lot of respect from cash buyers. It's your peers that are not gonna respect you, which is fine by me. I, I still don't get respected by uh, other wholesalers near me. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cash buyers respect you the most because you're selling the deal. They don't care about your age. Mm -hmm. um, so th that'd be really it. If you just have the confidence, you're going to be fine. Yeah. It's just like, and I'm going to be, I, I, I honestly like don't know if I want to get my real estate license at 18 because I've been hearing like things about like how uh, people get their real estate license and they can't wholesale anymore. Cause like, uh, that, but you're more regulated. Um, your broker might not let you, you can get your assignment fee revoked. Um, if someone complains about it, which anyone can, it can be legal. Yeah. And they can still take your assignment fee. I'm not here to scare you, but just understand that risk because nobody talks about those risks. Um, I, so, I don't see the benefit of it, but it costs thousands yeah. a year to hold a license. Yeah. Yeah, no one ever talks about that. Yeah. It, it's expensive. No one ever talks about that. Yeah, it's really expensive. And you're going to have yeah. the same problems as mm -hmm. a realtor also that you're saying yeah. now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, I just don't know, like, if I should, like, drop the whole wholesaling thing and become a realtor, like, when I'm 18, or if I should just continue doing this. Like, I don't know. Like, it depends on how much I'm going to make doing this, like, if I'm good at it or I not. I'll tell you, man. I, I know realtors that make $50 million a year that they make more money doing that than realtor. But I know a heck of a lot more wholesalers make a million dollars a year. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Well, you got to so. look at it. I, I'm not going to tell you what to do. It, mm -hmm. I think it's up to you, but if you think whole, like being an agent, it's going to be like all sunshine and rainbows. It ain't. I want you to do me a favor and I want you to look up how many wholesalers there are in Albuquerque, which probably not like insane. Look up how many realtors there are in Albuquerque. It's insane. Yeah. Like an ungodly amount of people are realtors. So if you're yeah. scared about competition now, just wait. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, what is it? It's just like a, another thing is like, I'm, I'm, I have a part-time job right now because like when I, when I get older, like I, I want to like be able to prove that I can buy like a, like a rental property, for example, I want to be able to prove that I can pay for it. Right. Like I have to have like positive cash flow in my, my balance sheet, you know, stuff like that. So, um, Why do you so think I'm, that? I have a job. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I just feel like some couple, like 
So I know like a um, kid, he's like, I think he's like 23. He's not a kid anymore, but you know, he's 23. Um, and he told me that keeping like getting a job would be very beneficial because when you go to buy investment properties, like banks look at your like, uh, what is it, like the amount of money you're getting and like making and stuff like that on your balance sheet and things like that, like on a consistent basis. Yeah. Bro, you, you need, you need to get the income up. Like you, you don't yeah. need to worry about investing, man. Not, not even, yeah. I mean, investing is good and all like I was always investing since I was like 13, 14. Like, it's good, but you should focus more about getting the skills to make the money. Because yeah. if you can get a skill that makes you a quarter million a year in wholesaling, mm -hmm. then you can worry about the investing after. Mm -hmm. It's the yeah. income's going to be the most important part right now for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also the driving for dollars sinks. Like I should be spending, like I think I spend like only like four hours driving for dollars a week when I'm back at home. So do you reverse driving for dollars? Reverse driving for dollars? What is that? I, I've never heard of that. Could so. you explain that? Yeah, it's in my thousand uh, dollar course. Just kidding. All right, so you just get a yellow sticky note. You slap that on the house. You're gonna drive for dollars, and just say, "Hey, this is Sheree. I had a quick question in the house. Please give me a call back." That's all you put on there. They're gonna mm -hmm. call you back. You're probably gonna get three times as contact three times more people than you do than regular driving for dollars. So you get mm -hmm. three times as many people you get a contact with, and you mm -hmm. just increase the chance, and the sellers come to you. That's okay, it. that's it, it. Yeah, it's three times more efficient. And it's mm -hmm. an extra 15 seconds. It's mm -hmm. like doing direct mail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like I, I am, I'm getting, you know, like, like any 16 year old, I am getting a lot of backlash, you know, for doing this stuff. Like from who? From my, I mean, basically from my mom and dad, pretty much. Like, it's just like, they're just like, you know, it's uh it's not a good business. It's just like a very sketchy business, that kind of stuff. That's what they're saying. But they, they're still on board with it if I can make money, but. They're still saying it's like very sketchy and not like a legitimate business is what they're saying. So. Why is it? I, I mean, I have an attorney who sent, gives me my checks. So yeah, it's, it's should, I don't know. yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much basically all I have for you. Like, yeah. Uh, Tree, do, do what you want, man. You don't have to have your life figured out right now. I promise you that. I know there's mm -hmm. a lot of pressure from your parents. I get it. I never really had that. So I can't relate to you on that part, but dude, there, there's so much pressure on your parents. I'm putting no pressure on you. You can do whatever you want. Just understand that you don't have to figure everything out like instantly right now. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I would say my advice is I'm biased. I think wholesaling is still going to be the best one for you. Um, being a real estate agent is tough. Every 18, 19 year old real estate agent I personally know and I see in my local market, they are making at most 50K a year. And I don't even know how much they're spending on the market. They're making 50K at most. And they've been realtor for like one to two years. I'm saying that respectfully. Mm -hmm. Friends, I know. Now, every 18, I know about six 18, 19 year old wholesalers in an hour radius from me making over 100K a year. Yeah. It's just when you put in the same amount of effort, you make more money in wholesaling. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I've personally seen. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about like the million dollar realtor Ryan Serhan guys. Th those guys will make more money, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, just understand that point. Um, yeah. yeah. But don't feel like you have to have life figured out, man. You're fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. There was a there was a kid that I saw that was actually kind of like interesting. So like his name was Jacob Blank. Have you heard of that kid? Yeah. Yeah. So like I, I, I saw him like talking about how he like turned his like empire. Like he was 18 or whatever. Some crazy stuff like that. He turned his like whole real estate empire into like a million dollar business or whatever. I don't know what was happening with that. Is that what he showed you? No, he hasn't showed me, but he's just saying on the internet. I don't know if he's legit or not. So I was just asking that. like, I don't Bro, know. I can, bench, I can bench 5,000 pounds. I just told you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see your point. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can tell you I speak uh, Arabic. I don't speak Arabic. I speak Spanish. I can tell you that. Prove mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've proven it many times, so I believe you. But you can look up my name anywhere; it pops up. Yeah, public mm -hmm. record. Yeah. I'm allowed to say Yeah, I'm just telling you. Everyone right, says, "What do you think of this guy? This guy? I don't know." But have fun, man. You're in India, yeah. so uh, yeah. that's cool, man. I love it. Yeah, we have a lot of people from India, dude, watching us. When are you going live again? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, got it. I'll watch that too. Oh. Have a great one, Good man. Day. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. India in the house. I love it. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, India is insane. You look it up because it's like 
you know, you really look into it because I thought we saw so many people from India watching us. I was like, holy moly, what, what language are they speak? And I'm like, there's thousands of languages and it. it's insane. Um, but uh, yeah, I took a world religion class once in uh, college and they're talking all the religions in India. I'm like, oh my gosh, you think it's just like one. It's like, whoa. Um, but um, cool place. I definitely want to go there. I'll probably do a whole something live there one time. That, that'd be fun. But uh <laughs> They got some crazy dent- density population place. Like it's so some of the population so dense there, like New Delhi or something. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Wesley, yo, yo, what's up? It's crazy because I didn't think I was gonna get on this, but all right. Um, I, I can take I, you off if you want. We no, we can no, we can no, put no, that no. into reality. <laughs> no, 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 Joke, no, man. <laughs> but um. All right, so I ended up having to go through, like, filing the FOIA Act and everything. I didn't think I did it correct. But long story short, I got a list of, like, 3,800 code violations from the past two months. I narrowed it down to, like, around 2,000. So a question that I had, because I saw that there were, like, a lot of vehicle violations. Is there any way to kind of, like, filter those out? Are they worth it? or Like, from code enforcement? Yeah, it was like vehicles being parked in the yard. Some of them had yeah, like I would, stuff, but... Yeah. Are you getting a Excel list, or is this public? Like, how are you getting this list? I got it through an Excel list. I would filter those out. So I would go... Um, you know how they have the headers? And I would just find all... I would search or do that and just find all the vehicle ones and just delete them out. The thing is, though, like, some of them actually have, like, yard and stuff on them. So like I keep those. It, yeah, it's like vehicle slash yard. So it confuses me on if I want to remove them or not. Let me ask you a question, Wesley. Um, are there like APN codes or like special like crazy weird like five digit codes or like it's a C four violation like things like that? Yeah, they have those. This okay. is my time like going through filing the code violations. So it's kind of like a li- like a learning thing. I'm just now today actually getting started on like. Just, getting my list and stuff together so I can start calling. So today is kind of like my first day of trying to get started with the wholesale. Thank you for taking action. You're doing what 90% of people aren't actually doing that watch this stuff. You're taking action. So round of applause for you. Like I'm legit. Like, thank you for taking action. I I, I tell everyone to take action. And I got a real one out here right now. What I want you to do is call code enforcement and actually ask what these codes mean. Because I, I'm telling you, they might tell you and it might change everything. Like, oh, C67 is tall grass. Oh my God. And then you're going to like pull it up and it's going to be like a weird violation thing. It makes it so much easier. Um, I would just ask them questions and okay. they're going to answer to it, right? It's public information. Okay. Um. Yeah. Cause they, weirdly enough, I'm in Memphis. So apparently they can't like give out the information and I had to go through like they recommended that I file a FOIA act. So I got that. And I guess when I'm like making the request, I can just go in and learn the violations and request specific violations because I requested all of them because I didn't. Oh, them. yeah. I request specific tall grass, structural damage, mold and mildew um, and like structural issues. OK, definitely. Those oh, are the ones that most of the deals are going to go on. If you're in Memphis, tall grass is probably gonna be your, your best bet. OK, cool, because I got it like narrowed down to like a list of about a thousand now, but I, I think I'm just going to use the list I have and for now and the next time I'll definitely know like the specifics, but I'm just going to use the list of 2000 and go ahead and skip trace that. Speaking of that. Okay. So I want to start using true people search, but like true people search has like a million numbers from the same person. So how do like, what number would you recommend using like the first one or just try to go through all of them? I would use all the wireless numbers. That hop up and try calling those. All right, because I saw like a violation from a few months ago from this guy. He's like 68 years old. Found his name, but he has like 10 different wireless numbers on him. So, yeah. Try calling him. That's only, and there's an email on there you can email too. Uh, That'd probably be the best thing you can do. Okay. Well, I'll definitely go ahead and get started on trying to get this list filled up. Like, I'm eventually gonna start skip tracing, but right now I just want to get started. So, well, take the action, man. What do you say? 
I'm prob eventually I'm gonna start paying for skip tracing, but right now I'm just gonna use the tools. Yeah, that man. You're fine. Um, I would also recommend um it before you pay for skip tracing, because let's say you have like a thousand skip traces, it'll cost you like what a hundred bucks, hundred and twenty bucks to skip trace that, right? If you just use your gas money and just st put sticky notes on those houses, it'd be hard to a thousand, but like that's an, that's like doing direct mail too. And you don't have to call them. Uh, so that's another option you have also. See, for me, like, like right now, transportation isn't the best. So I'm like, just... that's why I want to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. See, I, I, that's what I want to like, I, I want to communicate and kind of see what's working best for you. It's a coaching call, right? Um, so yeah, <laughs> I, would, I would call it, man. That, that's what I'd say. Okay. Yeah. So right now, like transportation wise, I actually have to get a car. So what I'm going to do You're is fine, man. go through and... I'm going to go through skip trace the, as many as I can and just like get those numbers. And really what I was planning to do is just to keep cost, like to keep it cost efficient. I was just going to like take part of the list, skip trace it and go through those leads. And then when I exhaust those, go to the other part and skip trace. Cause for all I know, I could get a deal on the 50th call. Like nobody knows with this. So it could happen at any point. Yeah. Good. You just got to take the action, man. I can't guarantee it's going to be a deal. I can't guarantee it's not going to be a deal. You just got to take the action and see. Memphis is a great market, though. Definitely. I've been hearing a lot about it. I know, like, two other people who do wholesaling, and it's crazy because I had, like, I found a couple of channels, and, like, I was just getting, like, very scattered information that just had me confused on the whole That's problem. the point. If I confuse you, I'm going to sell you a course to make it simple, and then I create a problem, and I sell you a solution. It's all on purpose. I know, like, definitely. So there's, I ended up, there was, I was doing a lot of research on wholesaling, and then I ended up seeing you all's channel, and then I, like, was going through the videos, and then I saw the free wholesaling course. And truthfully, going through that course is really what gave me the confidence to know that, hey, I can actually do this business, because it made it so much simpler than it, than other people tried to make it seem. Appreciate it, man. I mean, it means a lot. Definitely, I, I definitely appreciate you guys because it made this process a hundred times easier. Like, I don't know if I would have been as confident stepping out and even trying to. I wouldn't have even knew about filing for code enforcement if it wasn't for you all. So I definitely appreciate. Nobody talks about it. If they don't, <laughs> they they don't. do it. They don't talk about it. They can't make money off of you. I can't. I, I'm not going to make a dime off of you for telling you to do that. I don't care. True it helps you out. True enough. And I definitely appreciate the help, man. And I also appreciate the coaching call as well. I'll be on here a lot. This was the first live I was able to catch, but I actually take on a lot of information from these. Of course, man. The one thing I tell you about Memphis, though, there are weird areas in Memphis that are like really nice and proper and they're like kind of hard to wholesale. And there's kind of like respectfully like war zones that are like really hard to wholesale and like they're just really high crime areas. Uh, there's like a happy median where like the air are a little higher. But like it's a lot of like blue collar rentals. You just got to fit like Memphis is so diverse. Like how like there's so many different type of houses. You got to find the area. Some of these areas are really good for wholesaling and some of them are terrible. You're going to have to do some research and see where wholesalers are wholesaling in that area. Um, I know a lot of people struggle in some areas in Memphis um, and some areas are really good. You're going to have to figure that out, though. It'll come with time. I'm right yeah. Just figuring like filling things out, but I know the Memphis area well enough to know like the air I know what you mean because there are areas that are like great and then there are areas that like literally four houses in a row they're broken into or abandoned or something. Yeah, and those are hard to wholesale because you might lock it up for twenty five thousand, but you might sell it for thirty and they did all this work for like three or four thousand dollars. Exactly. Not bad, right? But like you want to be going after something that's like fifteen twenty. True enough, true enough. And it's possible, like, especially with the Memphis market, because real estate isn't the, just in general. It's a pretty good market here, but you just have to know how to, like, navigate through it. Yeah. And do all Shelby County, you're going to be fine. Definitely. Um, That was, but yeah, that was just about it for me. I just needed to get that clarification because I seen the vehicle violations. I was like, I'm, I don't think I really want these, do I? I probably not. There are also a lot of LLCs. I kind of went through and filtered those. Yeah, out. those are, might be commercial property, so just be careful on that end too. 
See, I got it for the residential though. Like it's specific. Oh, okay, yeah. You, you, I'd probably skip the LLCs though. Still. Yeah, I did. Up. Yeah. I went through, cleaned the list up today, and removed those LLCs because I just knew it wasn't really going to be the easiest thing dealing with them. So that was like my first thought, especially from watching you all. I know that LLCs. That's more than more in the beginning are a no go. Yeah, man. So Wesley, when you come back on, I'm going to literally ask you one question, and I'm going to need an answer from you. All right. I got you. The answer, the question is going to be, did you figure out what the codes are for them? So it makes it easier for you to figure out which ones to be going after. Because I don't want you to call 100 and only 20 of them are really viable. Then you're wasting all that time, which you could have done doing more marketing. So I want you to figure out what these codes actually mean so you don't waste that time. Okay, I got you. I've definitely seen, like, I think it's on the public records where they actually give you the codes for each oh, of them. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, I can just go on there and look them up. I've seen them, but I didn't really pay them much attention because I wasn't thinking about the fact that code violations could be other things besides just, like, the structural, the weeds and stuff like that. Yeah. They're all over the board. Some of them even say CE miscellaneous. But, yeah, I'm learning the process as I go, and I'm glad to have more. I'm, I still got some studying to do because I know that there's more that I can learn from the course. But right now what I'm doing is just like taking you all's advice and learning as I go. All right. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. See you later, man. See you, man. Bro, do you got to work tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, always work. It's well, it ain't work when you're late. doing what you love. <laughs> Appreciate It's getting late in North Carolina, man. What ten o'clock? No, it's about eleven o'clock now. <laughs> What's up, man? How how can I help you out? Oh yeah, I got this. Uh, I got another one due to be on the contract here tomorrow, and I just wanted to run through it with you right quick. Get your thoughts on. It. All right, I'll tell you, deal or no deal. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're here for, right? Well, tell me, man. Yeah. I, give me the info. So um, I can't. The ARV is kind of hard to come up with. It's one of yeah. these. It's out in North Carolina mountains, out there in Hanging Rock. In the West, um, West part? In North Carolina mountains. Uh, Westfield, North Carolina. Okay. It's uh, by Hanging Rock. Matter of fact, that's where uh, it's like five minutes from Hanging Rock, North Carolina. Okay. With the Hanging Rock Mountain and whatnot. Oh, okay. You're by Asheville. By yeah, Asheville. out that way. Yeah. So um, he got it listed. I'm waiting on him to clear up this, this deal. He got it with the real estate oh, agent. I did a deal in Canton. Um, that's like 15, 20 minutes away. Yeah. Right, I know yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So um, I th I'm... It's like a decent little tourist attraction area, you know, especially during uh, between spring and fall. So, uh, but there, I, I can't come up with a comfortable enough ARV on it. The property itself is, uh, it's ready to go. Like, it's a smart home. He got it all hooked up with Alexa, you know, all the bells and whistles and stuff like that. Hot tub. Uh, four bedroom. What is a four bedroom, three bath? Hey, that was a four bedroom, three bath, right? We counted three bed bathrooms. Four bedroom, three bath. Yeah, a four three. Okay. Uh, three fireplaces. Like I said, it got all the bells and whistles. He uh willing to leave everything in it, all the furniture, the TVs, all the appliances, all that. Um, I got him down to two sixty. He got it listed on Zillow for for three hundred. Oh, Don't tell tell me a range. <laughs> a range. Uh, I, don't want, I don't want any uh, sneaky people on here. True, true. Um, yeah, in between uh, let's say three. Uh, I'm gonna say three hundred. That's what he wanted me for. And, uh, okay. No, no renovations needed. The only issue on it that uh, he told me about was something about a sec the septic. Something about um the original owner 
I only put in a, a two a two bathroom septic system, and it's it got three bathrooms Good running out. Yeah, so he said he got uh he said he got twelve k sitting in escrow to uh cover the um septic issue. Yeah, Meaning, like, he'll he'll have it taken care of once once it's bought or whatnot. Okay. But, but in order for that, he of course he gonna want a little bit more. So if uh, if I'm willing to take care of the septic issue on my own, then he'll knock it off the um, the asking price. I would probably. I mean, I'm trying to think here. I mean, why don't you just try to make it easier for him, right? You're providing a solution. Why don't you just get for two forty or two forty five with septic all the all the problems all together two forty two forty five. Because it's going to cost twelve k, but you're going to get a twenty k reduction. You're going to make eight thousand more on that, and that might work. Um, but you, you can present it in like a nice, nicer way than that, right? But um, I would probably do that. Um, I would. I, I've done some deals out there. I could tell you is talk to Asheville uh, real estate investors on Facebook. Uh, there's the. I actually talked to the head of the Western North Carolina Real Estate Investors Association. His phone number is some. I. I I looked him up like last year. I sold this deal. Um, Say that again. He was the president of the Western North Carolina Real Estate Investors Association. Okay. Because you're like you're way out there. Um, yeah. So uh, that's gonna be the best one for you. Um, I done a lot of deals there because I was wholesaling in Knoxville, and then people had a lot of deals just east. Um, that's gonna be my best bet for you to sell that. You have to talk to a lot of buyers though. It, it could be a good Airbnb or rental. So cold that's call what I would think. Um, cold call in the four runs. I think it's going to be an Airbnb or a rental opportunity. That, that, that's my guess. I don't think it, someone can flip that if it's that nice already. Could be wrong. Yeah. Um, I'm the, the guy. He's just, he's just very, very motivated to sell. That's why I'm thinking like uh, the motivated seller. And then there's a motivated price. They got it. Yeah. Down. Yeah, I, that's I, what I'm saying. Yeah. But I can't coming up with that ARV is hard to determine if that um I'm not a hundred percent sure that that's a, a motivated price, you know. Even yeah. with him yeah. leaving the property as it is and all the furniture and all that, fully furnished and all that, I, I'm still not exactly sure. Like I say we, uh, we do close on it like tomorrow. I mean, well, get close on it this week. Next week, I can have somebody. Uh, somebody could be in there. Like it can be on the B and B market. Like, okay, I mean that that much ready to go. But I I'm, I just don't know if what he asking for is at or near retail value. You're going to have to call some buyers and kind of sniff them out and see where they're at. Uh, yeah. even work also. That, that's what I can tell you. True. True. Uh, it's, it's hard, man. Yeah. Cause last thing I want to do is, is to get them on contract and uh, yeah. have, to, have to back out from. It's never fun. <laughs> no. I don't like that either. So I, I would probably reverse wholesale. Uh, that's going to be my best bet on that one. It's weird, man. Um, it takes a certain buyer to buy out there because the population's a little smaller. Right. So it's right. you ain't like Winston Salem or uh, Charlotte, right? Like it's or Fayetteville. Like it's it's a little weirder out there. So you're gonna have to spend more time with those buyers. Um, I would co call the four rents. That's gonna be my first person I'm calling. And uh, is is there a way to uh to find the information on B and B? Owners, yeah, so let me uh, that's what I was thinking like reaching out to people who already got a couple of properties uh, on, on the BNB market Airbnb. out in that area. Hold on, I'm popping it up. All right, so uh, you can see my screen, right. Uh, not sure. All right. 
This is the Hayward County Airbnb, which is kind of like your area more or less, right? Um, so let's go here. So I'm just going to look at some of these. Um, so what do we got here? I don't know. I, cabin. These are kind of in the woods though, right? Um, all right. You got Canton right here. So this is Waynesville, right? So this is Waynesville. Uh, 114 a night. This is a cottage. So hold on. So I'm just popping up a cottage in here. So this is like one of those Airbnbs, right? Um, new cottage. Right here. Review. There's no reviews yet. Hosted by Evolve. It's a hospitality team. Um, decent. Uh, you could look up this address. You got to figure out where the address is on this and then reverse do it from there. We have a home in Waynesville here. Hold on. So this is a cool one right here. So, all right. Here's another Waynesville one. All right. Right here. And like on this one, it's a two one. Um, doesn't look like it's in the mountains, right? Uh, it looks decent though. Blah, 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 blah. It's so nice. It's the greatest thing in the world. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Christy uh, is this. So what I'm going to do, co-host with Brianna. What I can do is I can I click here, contact the host and see if she's looking to buy more. I could get in trouble there. So what I'm probably going to do is sort of figure out what where the address is. Kind of easy to do. Um, or you can just go to try just contact her and to see uh it shouldn't be that hard to find the address of the property though and uh right. yeah and then i'll just call some oh, just, right just reach out to them like like you initially would if you was trying to the yeah, rent it okay. itself yeah oh yeah that makes it yeah because uh I, I did something similar to that where i was trying to come up with the value i was just looking at uh Similar B and B properties with like yeah. the same amount of uh bedroom bathroom and seeing what they was uh charging uh for their rental rates. Yeah, trying to because I went to rental meter and rental meter ain't have nothing for me. <laughs> You're in a weird market. Like, oh god! So Try yeah, that, to like that's honestly what I do. All right. Yeah, that sound that sound that makes sense. Sort of, sort of uh, along the lines of what I was doing already. Yeah. I was gonna try to, uh, I was trying to cash flow comp it. Also, uh, being, yeah, being a piece of it. that could work too. True. Right, well, I appreciate it. No worries, man. Let me know if you got any uh, questions, anything else I can help you out. But uh, it's a weird deal, man. But uh, that, that's probably gonna be your best bet. True. We're gonna find Airbnb, I Airbnb, right? That, that's that's where we're gonna find them. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking too. All like right. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't knocking nothing off the table unless I know for sure. No, no, man. <laughs> You're good. For no, real. Uh, you're doing great, man. Proud of you. Keep it up. I appreciate you, boss. I talked to. What'd All you right. say the next All live right. is? Uh, Tuesday. All right. I'm, I'm definitely tuning in for that intro. Hey. <laughs> All, right, All right, we'll be on, man. All right, All right. All right see yeah. you, man. All right, beautiful. All right, next we got Jamie. What's good? All right, now you got the green screen yeah. popping. Yep. Okay. All right, love it. <laughs> All right, man, what's up? How can I help you out? So, yeah, uh, I sent you guys an email. We can sort of discuss that. It kind of relates to the theme of today, so. All right. Look at my emails. All right. I mean, I think I, I mentioned it to you on Friday. You said okay. you, some of your guys were looking at it. I'm not sure if they, you know, did the whole comps and things. Yeah, I'd probably call you tomorrow. Um, okay. I, mean, I got my employees. They can't work on the weekends. All right. Um, oh, my gosh. I got all these emails. All right, I gotta just search your name on this. When did you send it? 
Uh, from my email? Like, what, what's my email? Yeah, what, you know, when did you send the email? Uh, it was Thursday or Wednesday late night. All right, what's your email address? It's Preve, so P R E V dot Inc. or I N C. All right. Okay, because I have to search these. All right. Yeah. All right, and so what about it? Nothing. I mean, just criticize criticize me. Is it a deal or is it not? Deal? Right. I, I think my first impression is it's not a deal, but I wanted to negotiate further. Is the I, land un owned underneath it? Yes. Okay. So, wait, are you guys talking about the? No, I'm not talking about the the trailer park. I'm talking about the the house in Mariana. The what? The one in wait. The brick house, brick house, Mariana. Oh, okay. Uh, it doesn't start with a five. No. All right. All right. All right. Hold on. Let me go back to my other email here. I think I can just give you the address. I get a lot of emails. All right. Um. <laughs> Having technical difficulties. No, it's to go back on a Thursday is too crazy. All right, I can go by your email. All right, which one? The I'm getting a lot. Of, all right, hey, I'm going to give you an offer on a deal. Deal. Yeah, you only sent me one, uh, the one with the five on it, which I don't want to name. Is it brick? Is it made of bricks? Bricks? No. Hmm. That's weird. Yeah, I only have uh, two. Okay, well, I can I can give you the list in on on Silo. I, I don't really mind. We're just putting the private chat, I guess. Okay, sure. One segundo. All right. You you said you speak Spanish. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. Un poquito. <laughs> Un poquito. <laughs> that's good. That's good. It's better than it's nothing. Not, I'm not a guru, you know. Oh, I, I made five million dollars uh, wholesaling this year. I prove it. That's what I tell everyone. Um, all, right. all right, I'm looking at this. So, um, what do you have under contract for? Two ten, and I believe I can do a lot better. But uh, I haven't done the actual inspection. It's dated for Tuesday morning, and I hope I can do it for cheaper, essentially. Because I don't think it's a deal. I, I I had a talk with Corey. He's in the you know he's a pre. Yeah. And he told me that it was probably better if I got it at one ninety. Or around that price. The most a cash buyer is going to buy this thing is at is at two ten. So, okay. anything under two ten is going to be a deal. So, no deal. You got to get below two ten on that. Okay, so I'm two hundred. You can make probably ten k. That'd be my guess. Okay, okay. that's good. I, I, I'm closer. You know, I'm better off than I thought. I, I thought I was for, worse off. I, I don't. I, no, I, I. The other one, the other comps I'm seeing on there are showing, uh, similar square foots are at like two twelve, two fifteen, and this one's a little nicer. It's an extra bedroom, so I think two ten. Probably cash buyer buy it at, yeah. maybe two hundred if it's in worse condition. The extra um, bedroom is an actual apartment, like with a separate uh, electricity meter and all. So, you know. Yeah, but the square footage is the same. So, yeah, I get that. Yeah. So, I'm looking at those, those similar square footages. I'd probably say a cash buyer is 210. That's pushing it. I'm, I'm, being, so. I'm being super sweet at 210. No yeah. deal right now. If, you, if we're saying 200, that's a deal. So, yeah. that's, that's really good to know. I didn't know that, you know, the only thing that mattered was square footage instead of like you know usability in terms of oh it's a separate well, usability apartment. matters like if you have four separate apartments on one like it's completely i'm just doing a general like mm -hmm. scouring search on it yeah you're gonna have to be under 210 on this okay i can do that definitely I, it's a night it's actually like i'm only saying i'm saying that nicely because the inside looks really nice mm -hmm. it should be a lot it, like you should pr a cash buyer should buy this thing for 190 but the inside looks really good, like 
flooring, all that stuff. It was it built before the 50s, so that's not good. But it's on a good amount of acres, so that's another plus. So I would say 210. Mm -hmm. Okay, so get it for 190 and hope for 200. Since uh, you could do 210 on that, you can make 20. Try 190. It's a nice house. Okay. Like, I usually never put properties on a contract that look that nice. So that's a plus. You already got a decent discount. So keep it up. That's a good one. Thanks. Yeah, that's man. Good. That's Love good to it. Hear. All right. Any other questions? Um, no, I don't think I don't think so. Right. I want to get space. For I try to go call them now, but uh, don't do that. So <laughs> go uh, contact them later. But uh, good yeah, stuff. Bro. Keep going up. <laughs> yeah, you break now. You'd be breaking TCPA law, which is not good. So no calling right now. But, it's uh, in the contract. <laughs> uh, All right, thanks, All right, man. man. How's it going? Good. Let me know if you need help with anything else. Yep, we'll do. All right, boom. All righty. Next here we got Road Runner. Hello. Hello. Hi, what's up? Hey, what's going on? This is Zach. Yeah, what's right. going on, Zach? Ain't you know I was going to get a set that has some questions for you. <laughs> oh, what's up? What's your name? What'd you say? What's your name? My name's Sosa. Sosa. Yeah, man. My name's Sosa. I'm out here in uh, I'm in the Charlotte area uh, right now. That's cool. Your first name Sosa? No, that's just my nickname. Okay. What you want? Sammy Sosa right? or Chief Keef? Huh? Which Sosa? Which Sosa? No, I'm just Sosa. <laughs> I love it, man. Okay. Yeah, so, um Yeah, so when using the um ARV minus repairs times 0.70 how do I know my profit? Like what am, I know you said that's the so how do I know my profit? So that's gonna be your max allowable offer. So 70% is only if the ARV is under 120,000. Okay. Yeah, so so are so, right, so if the property is a hundred and hundred and twenty thousand, take away twenty thousand in repairs. Times 0.70. So that's 70,000, right? Uh-huh. That means that's how much the cash buyer is going to buy the house for. Or oh, right. so if I want to make 10 or whatever else, I just subtract it from there. Yep. All right. And so in, in this, because I was doing it the different way. Um, so is it a difference between ARV times 0.7 times repairs? Is is that two different things? No. That's a guru selling you something crazy. They're confusing you on purpose so they can sell you a course and tell you what really works. All right. So just do ARV repairs times 0.7 times 0.8. Just all depends on the um the 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 ARV of the house. Yep. All right. And also, so I have been getting into the um been trying to call the um the for sale by owners on, on Zillow. Okay. And um, I was in what I was trying to see. So, how do people get deals on Zillow? Is they calling in just one market, or they call in a bunch of different markets? Because um, if you're in Charlotte, all around Charlotte, not just that county. Same thing within an hour around you. All right, yeah, because that's what I was thinking. Because like I, I had I had used that criteria that you had them put for the um Zillow, and then when I got in some of the smaller um like smaller cities. It was only a couple of them. So really yeah. just call what's there and just go on to the next. Yeah, I just go to the next closest one. All right, that's what I was kind of thinking. And I had the um I went to two fire departments personally. Um, because two of them is right up the street from me. I tried to get the um get the open get the open calls for any um fires that they had within the last 30 days. One of them said that they haven't even had no fires and he wouldn't even know how to get it to me if he could. I went to one down the street. He That's said a terrible firefighter. Huh? It's a terrible firefighter. I don't know what houses I went to. We don't have to keep a record. That's terrible. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. He said they haven't really because I was because I said the last 30 days or even 60 days, 
he was like, they haven't really had no, um, they haven't really had no calls. And then I went to this one right up the street. They pretty much told me the same thing, but he was like, he goes see if he can get some for me. I had just got the own email. So Dude, what you're in Charlotte, man? <laughs> There's fires every day there. <laughs> so they just BSing me. Um, if you go to a firehouse, maybe not. I would go to a, a department like the city of Charlotte, and then go to them because they're every day. It's a big city, man. Huge city. I done ran across a couple of them um, just driving for dollars, but I never really um took Ford on, but just some of them that was on fire and stuff. I would and, keep um, calling and call different ones and just go to the county if you if you have to. So go go to the county instead of the fire departments. Oh, it's the county fire department or the city. Oh, okay. They're all different, like municipalities. Blech. Yeah. And um, and another thing, I had called in Salisbury to get the on um, code violation list, okay. and they and they told me that they don't have a list. They can only give me a property that that I ask about. Like if I okay. have properties I, that I see myself. That's the only way they don't have no list. They don't they don't keep no list. Only if I ask for a property, they can look something up for me. Okay. That that's a cute answer they usually give. I, those are my favorite. And I use uh, the own I'm not respecting that answer from them. Not from you, from them, because yeah. this happens all the time where they say we don't have that list. I send them a FOIA request and they're like, Oh, here's your list, sir. They're 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 BSing you, man. I'm saying that in the nicest way possible. So you're telling me you don't have a list of all the code violations? No. Then how do you know? Then how do you have all these violations on these houses? You're gonna have to be nice. Try one more time. Yeah. Be a nice guy. Give him the carrot again, the stick. Right. Um, that's an old person saying. But uh, you just do a Freedom of Information Act and and request it. They do. You might just ask them to quite like, hey, what do you do to all the houses that are have violations? Oh, we make a list. Can I have that list? Like. It's just logic, man. It's 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 ridiculous. Try to get you, in a way, try to get them to say that they have a list. It's they like, do have a list. Yeah. I guarantee it. There's no code enforcement department without a list. It's hilarious, man. Yeah, because I was just dri- I was driving around on in that area too, and had the um, I had the scene like had done got some houses that was basically like you know code violations, but I had because I really I really just ran across your um. A channel, I say probably about like a um, I like a probably like a little bit a week or so, and I I like what was going on and everything that you were saying on like the whole outlaw type of with the gurus type of thing. Because <laughs> I brought two mentors before, and I wouldn't say they was bad, but I did split um two. I had this one of my split both bothly two deals with them and paid them, and it was oh, two biggest deals. But oh um, yeah, so but I'm I'm still going. I got something that's supposed to be closing in a couple of days for like fifteen five. Nice man. But um, Congrats. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get it how you going because like, I'm closing deals, but I ain't getting them consistently. Yeah, so I'm trying to get it consistently going, and I and I like the list that you're talking about. So I really trying to pull some free list and you know really make some free money, and then I can I still put a free but. I still on um, you know pull this too because that's what I was just doing. I was just pulling and listening to things like that, and I kind of got on. I like what you said. What I kind of noticed, I feel like I haven't been talking to a lot of motivated people because I call a lot, and it's hard to make offers when everybody's just saying no. So, okay, wait. Right. You're going. You're taking action. You're going after the code violation list. I've, I'm telling you right now. You start pulling those lists. You're gonna get a lot of different conversations. Yeah, and um, so you're taking the action, man. You're not talking. You're doing it. So I love it, man. Yeah, you're I'm going out, man. Because um, yeah, no, and and I also I also did the same thing with the um Charlotte. I tried to get the water the water shit off the list, and they basically gave me the same runaround. And I used the own um, Freedom of Law Act. And they basically told me to um, do what I had to do. Because I was like, they say it's it's personal information on there. And I was like, I just need the addresses. I don't need nothing else. Yep. And then there's a whole loop loop around it. Worst case scenario, you get the utility lien list. And then I'll pop up. 
Utility lien list and pop up. Utility lien list on the public records. That's your worst case scenario. You can still get that list pretty easy. All right. And t- tell me what what kind of advice would you have for me on this? I'm kind of everywhere. I know you're I'm hearing it. You're everywhere, man. Even with I, the markets though. Because I'm also well, let me in ask you, Florida. So you said you did two deals with the mentors and then you do another deal now. What marketing did you do to get those three deals? No, I done did I done did seven deals so far. Okay. Where well, did you get those seven deals from? What marketing? All cold calling. All co- what kind of lists? Um, all of them was vacant besides the one I'm closing now and the one I closed, another one I closed last year, which was a driving for dollars. Okay. So Insurance. my best advice for you is do what's working and then add on. So fo- still do the vacants because you've done a lot of deals from those. Yeah. And then start implementing more uh, government lists as you can. Don't try to do all of them out all at the same time. Focus on one and then start implementing it. That'd be my best advice. I would drive for dollars also. And I would start doing reverse trying for dollars. I don't want to overwhelm you. Yeah. Let's focus on cold calling vacants. That's what's working. That's what's putting the food on the table. Start drying for dollars and reverse drying for dollars. And then start implementing government lists and cold calling those. All right. That's it. So- so with the vacants, because I haven't been spending no money on the marketing, should I just keep calling the, the vacant lists I already got? Or is there some way that I can reach out to get a vacant list? Um, I mean, there's free trials. You can pull those lists if you really want to. Um, yeah. Just keep calling that list, I guess, if you want, and just drive for dollars also. You'll probably make more money driving for dollars than buying a list, though. And yeah. if you reverse drive for dollars, double that up, you'll be fine. All right. And what would you say by market wise? Where do you live? Are you in Charlotte? Yeah, I'm in Charlotte, but I'm from um St. Petersburg. So I got I got few buyers in basically St. Petersburg, Largo. And that's they kinda all like right next yeah, to Florida. Florida. North Carolina is way better than St. Pete St. Pete. Way better, man. Yeah, because it's bigger. Better. It's not because it's bigger, it's just it's cheaper. It's a lot easier, man. I promise you. Uh, stick to Charlotte. Drive for dollars around Charlotte an hour radius. Actually, let me let me do this. Co call the vacant list you got. Uh-huh. Go to all seven deals you you've done or you're currently doing, and drive around those neighborhoods. Best that's the best place. I, I'm telling you, wherever you do a deal, there's always a deal around the corner. Wherever you've done a deal, look this 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 the thing about it. Majority of the deals been in florida only close oh, really? to up here but said i just still do the same thing around here yeah I, I, I didn't know your deals were in florida were they all in st pete no nah, no nah. one was in st pete one was in clearwater one was in largo and one was in on um, pasco county but they kind of all within a close radius like some 30 minutes hour out to each other i would probably do what you're doing now and start implementing drying for dollars That'd be my updated advice. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, yo, yeah, well, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna figure out how to how to figure out how to um, some way to get them on um, figure out how to get them on list that I'm trying to get from and just so stay with the vacants, drive for dollars, and and it was crazy because I was actually driving um yesterday this pre foreclosure list I had, and I was driving by and I was doing what you said with the on sticky notes. Yeah. And it was crazy. I was going to a different house, but it was a house that I got when I was driving for dollars. And when I came up to it, it had a um, code violation on it. So I just oh, put it on a dome like, damn, like he said, this is like, this Bro, is a code violation. Take a picture of that and then go back to code enforcement and say, what do you do? Do you have a list of these houses? Yeah. When you slap this on a house, do you make a list of it? Like, you got to be like, can I have that list? Like, yeah. you got to like, kind of be like, Right, like you just caught. I just caught you. I mean, you know, take a picture of it. Put in 4K. Caught you in 4K right here. You slap that sticky. You slap that sticker on there. Now give me a list of those. Yeah, it's it's hard to uh, respond back to that. I promise you that. Definitely, definitely. You think it's possible? Um, if if I put in enough work and do everything that needs to be done to pull 100K for the year over with. Yeah, it depends how much you want to work, but yeah, easily. 
right. All right. Well, I, I, I'll keep in touch. I'm definitely here. I like everything you be saying and how you be on teaching. So right. I'll be bringing in, got some more questions I'll ask you. All right. Keep it up, Sosa. I right, appreciate it. Thanks, man. Awesome. Thanks, Sosa. Guys, this that is today's episode of Deal or No Deal. So appreciate it, guys. Uh, next live stream will be next Tuesday. So uh, make sure you hop on there uh, from me. I'll be hopping on Tuesday. Rick Ginn is going live on uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m. So go to the Rick Ginn YouTube channel and subscribe to him. It's just Rick Ginn, not Flip with Rick, Rick Ginn. He's going live tomorrow. Uh, if you did not hit the one-on-ones, talk to him tomorrow. He will go on the one-on-ones with you and talk to you also. And uh, appreciate it, guys. I'll see you soon. Make sure you smash the like button and subscribe. Check out freeholesling.com and appreciate you guys all.